All right, y'all. So pretty much, again, we're going to be going over candlesticks and entry points. And candlesticks are the main things that you're going to... We actually are just going to go over entry points in general. I want to show you guys the difference between the candles and the line. You can use, hey, Whitney. <laughs> and we can use either one to actually determine how we're going to get into the trades. So if this is your first time watching the video or being on a training or even just starting HFX, you do want to know, okay... We know that we can press the buy button and the sell button, but of course there are steps we have to take before we actually get into the trade. Um, so again, this is a part of, I just call it the HFX checklist. So you want to make sure you're doing these things before, not every trade, but at least before every session. So the first thing you're going to want to do um, is somebody who's been trading for a while or somebody who's just been taking notes. What's the very first thing that we have to do before we actually get into a trade? Right, we're gonna check the news. Thank you, Jessica. And we're gonna to go to forexfactory.com. So <clears throat> forexfactory.com has all these different currencies and all these different folders. And it's pretty much letting you know updates that came out about the currency fairs. So we need to know what's really going on. So if you see a red folder automatically, you don't wanna trade that currency as a new trader. It just means that the currency is gonna be moving extremely fast um, and you may, get spiked out, which means that the trade may not go in your favor. Um, if you see an orange folder, you can slow down or just lower your risk. And if you see a yellow folder, you should be okay to take the trade. If you don't see any folder at all, Nessa, you're drawing on the screen. If you don't see any, um, I'm gonna clear it off. If you don't see any folder at all, that's also a good sign. So let's just check the time is 10, 28 a.m. The only folder I see is a yellow folder for USD, which means everything else is in the clear. Everything else is in the clear. So now the second thing you're gonna do, and you also, if it helps, you can put your tabs in order. So first check the news. The next thing you're gonna do is actually check the payouts, right? Because we don't want to trade anything other under 70%, right? We are gonna check the currency strength as well, but it helps to know your payout first. So let's see, let's go with, you guys know I wanna go with Euro USD, but it's 68%. Um, so let's go with AUD CAD, right? So everybody's gonna to switch to AUD CAD. That's gonna be the, Austra what's wrong? That's gonna be the Australian dollar versus the Canadian dollar. And it's paying out 85%. So once everybody gets there, just drop AC in the chat so I can know that you guys are caught up. So when you actually come back to look at your currency strength, which is gonna be the last thing that you check, right? And this is the site, I will drop this in the chat as well. You can copy, paste and save it to your notes. The currency strength is gonna tell you which currencies are weak and which currencies are strong and how they're actually playing against each other. So since we selected AC, we wanna see how the Australian dollar is going against the Canadian dollar. And we really just want to think about this as a tug of war. So if the first currency is weaker, that means that the market might be selling, right? And if the first currency is stronger, that means that the market may be buying. So in AUD, CAD, the AUD is weaker, right? Meaning there are um, less AUD in the market and more CAD. I mean, more sellers and less sellers and more buyers, right? So those are the three things you wanna check, news, payouts, currency stream. And then you wanna go and you wanna select your strategy. Which strategy are you gonna use? So once you actually enroll into IM Academy, you have access to four different strategies on the Go Liberty scanner. So you just wanna go to goliberty.im and then log in with your IM Academy login. Now, the first strategy that is going to pop up on your screen is going to be the web slinger. If you guys were on the training this week, you know that we only pay attention to the strategies, the currencies, and the time frame. Everything else is going to be completely optional, right? So you want to pay attention to strategies, currencies, time frame. So what is that? S-C-T, if that helps anybody, because I like acronyms. <laughs> You also always wanna double check that the currency that you're looking at is also the currency that you're gonna be trading. 
So to change it, you just click on your screen and I'm gonna type in AUD, CAD. And I'm gonna look at it on a five minute time frame. And the reason why I'm selecting five minutes is because we're doing HFX, right? High frequency trading is supposed to be quick, fast paced, in and out with the bag. I'm not really interested in what happened in the last uh, 15 minutes if, sorry, I'm about to sneeze. I'm not interested in what happened in the last 15 minutes if, if, <laughs> if I'm getting in for a one minute trade, right? So the farthest I need to go back is five minutes. So this is the web slinger. And what you're gonna notice about this strategy is that it is color coded, which means that everything that's red is gonna be associated with the cell and every, thank you. And everything that's blue is gonna be associated with a buy. Oh, and Kayla, for the, for the currency strength, it's always gonna be two currencies in a pair. In this case, we're looking at AUD, CAD. So if in a currency pair, the first currency is called the base currency. And the second currency is called the quote currency. So if the base currency is stronger or has more bars, you should look for buys. And if the base currency is weaker, you should look for sales. So since in this case, the base currency is weaker, we're gonna look for sales. Does that make sense, Kayla? Sorry, we're gonna come back to the strategy and the strategy that we're using, you're welcome, is Web Slinger. So in the Web Slinger, it has over 20 indicators, but two indicator categories, right? Because indicators actually fall into different categories. So the indicator categories on this one are gonna be trend, well, it's mainly just trend. Yeah, it's basically, this is just a, it's, it's a trending, market strategy, right? So you can use the web slinger when the market is trending because all of these lines, right? They each represent the average price, right? They each represent an average price. So let's just say one line is the average price for the last five candles. Let's just say one line is the average price for the last 10 candles. One line is the price for the last average 20 candles, right? The average price for the last 20 candles and so on and so forth. So pretty much all of these are averages. Now, if something is way, way, way below every single average that it's hit before, that means that it's probably going to continue to drop. And that's what the web slinger is showing you. So since the red candles are attached to selling, and I'll highlight this as well, since the red candles are attached to selling, once you start to see that a red candle is forming under, right, all of these lines and clouds, which are just averages, right? So I don't want you to get confused or overthink it. You should know that you'll be looking for sales, right? You should be looking for sales. And that's exactly what happened. We see that the red candle, well, we see this red candle, right? But before it was a blue candle. So we would have been like, uh, we don't know. We could have got spiked out, but we just saw the red candle form and drop. Another red candle would have formed. And this would have been a really good candle to take a trade on because not only is are the sellers currently in control once you see a red candle, but price is also way below average. So if you guys have never written this down, I want you to write this down as well. The candles are a physical representation of price, right? Somebody's drawn on the screen. So somebody's drawn on the screen. So it's going to be red can, well, candles just represent price, right? So if you wanna draw it out, just write candles equal price. Right, so what this is physically showing us is that price is below average. Nessa, can you stop drawing on the screen? All right, thank you. And it's gonna be the opposite. If you see blue candles that are forming, a, and it'll actually say sell too, but I'm gonna go to a good clear example, right? And this will be, this is an okay example. It's kind of small, but it's an okay example. If you see blue candles, right? And remember candles represent price. If you see blue candles forming above all of the lines, right? Which means price is above average and it's continuing to go up. We know that we're going to look for buys, right? 
Now there's another indicator on this strategy and you're gonna notice it in the back is this cloud is called an itchy moku cloud, right? And you don't really have to know all of that, but this is how you spell it. Itchy moku kinku cloud, right? I dropped it in the chat. So what this cloud is telling you, I always think because it's actually called a cloud and it's a forecast, right? It's telling you what the market is going to do, right? And it's telling you how strong that trend is also gonna be. So if you guys wanna write this down, you can write again, candles equal price, lines equal average, right? And clouds equal forecast, right? But we need to know all this so we can determine if we're gonna be going for a buy or for a sell. So I'm just gonna go back to the past just to demonstrate how the cloud actually works, right? And I have to go back to the past because the cloud, if you'll notice, right? The cloud is always gonna be extended even before the candles are under it because it's predicting future price action, right? So the color of the cloud is gonna tell you which way the market is going. The size of the cloud is gonna tell you which way the market is going and also how close the lines are, right? So if we look, I just need a very clear example. Oh, let me zoom out maybe. Okay, cool. So let's just look right here, right? Do we all see this blue cloud? If you guys see this blue cloud, just drop a yes in the chat. So what this blue cloud was telling us was that, and I'll also get my pencil as well. So the buying trend would have started here, right? And you would have saw this blue cloud, even if the market was currently in this selling motion, right? This blue cloud would have been forecasted, even if the market was currently in this selling motion. And what this blue cloud was predicting was actually this entire buying trend, right? We would have seen, we probably actually would have seen the blue cloud start to form way down here. Like when the market was consolidating, this blue cloud would have been extended and we would have known that the market was about to actually switch directions. And not only that, we can see right here, right? Where the candles started to actually cross over all the lines and clouds after consolidation. So that would have been two confirmations that, all right, this market is about to start buying. Let me stop focusing on these sales and let me actually start to go with the trend, right? And then we would have had the same thing over here, just in the opposite way, right? For the selling trend, we would have saw that, we would have knew that the market was about to switch and it was going to slightly sell because this would have been forecasted. We would have saw this cloud way before this drop even happened, right? So that's two things that the web slinger is going to tell you. And you always want to trade on trend. Like if you see that you're in for buys and the market is continuously going up, this is the strategy you want to use, right? Or if you've been looking for sales and the market is continuously going down, this is the strategy you want to use, right? So now let's actually get into finding our entry points by using these candles because we have the confirmations that we need, right? We have a red candle, right? forming under the lines and clouds. So that tells us we should be looking for a sell. That confirms it. And as we can see, the trend started, the trend started up here and the market has been selling ever since. The market has been selling ever since. So the easiest way to find your entry points after you have your confirmations on whichever strategy you're using, the easiest way to find your entry points is to put two horizontal lines at the top, one at the top of the candle and one at the bottom of the candle, right? Once you find a strategy that really sticks out to you, you understand the indicators, you know how to look at it, the most you're gonna have to do is put four horizontal lines on your chart. So let's take this red candle, for example. We're gonna put a horizontal line at the top. Oh, that's a horizontal ray. One second, y'all. <clears throat> We're going to put a horizontal line at the top. And to select your horizontal line, there's a panel over here with all of these settings. You just want to click on the trend line tool, select horizontal line. I like to change the color to another color that's not on my screen. And I make the line a little bit thicker just so I can see it. And I'm going to put this at the top of this candle, right? So as soon as you put your first horizontal line on your chart, you have your first entry point. You have your first entry point, 
right? So this is telling us that when the market gets to 361 or higher, if you're using pocket option, just add five points because there is a little bit of a lag. So I would say about 365 or higher. If you were to see that number on your screen, you can go over to your broker, right? And you'll be able to click this red button and it's going to put you in for a sell, right? And we know that the entry point for a sell is 360 or higher because we have a red candle, right? And this is physically representing the price. We know that price is way below every average that has been, right? All these represent different averages. And we also know that price is forecasted to continue to sell. It's, continue, it's gonna continue to sell, right? And it's gonna drop very low because we see there may be a little bit and we, we're probably gonna stay on this uh, pair for the entire session so you guys can actually see, right? But we probably gonna have a little bit resistance, right? We're gonna have a little bit of a push up, right? So the buyers are gonna do something, but for the most part, it's gonna continue to sell. And what you're gonna notice about the web slinger is that the line, the lines get, not right now, you just had breakfast. And the lines are getting wider and wider, right? So we know that the trend is gonna to continue to drop. Whereas to right here, we see that the trend was very skinny, it's very skinny, right? Is very skinny and then look what happened we had a skinny candle right there we had a skinny candle right there but for the most part we're still selling just as it was predicted to do so yeah destiny the confirmations are for a sell and you can always ask yourself these questions once you come into the market who's in control of the market right i used to always ask myself these three questions who's in control of the market right now right the buyers or the sellers so you will ask yourself that question so we have the sellers the second confirmation would be, or the second question would be, how strong is this trend, right? And you can ask yourself these questions across any strategy. Who's in control of the market? That lets you know what color confirmations to look for. Ask yourself, how strong is this trend, right? And we know that this is a very strong trend because price is below every average price that it's been before. Each one of these lines represent an average price of where or average place of where price was at for the last couple of candles so one of these are 5 10 15 20 50 if you've ever seen the 200 ema the 50 ema um that's just literally an average for the last 200 candles or average for the last 50 candles so we have two confirmations that price is going to continue to drop the red candle right we know this is a strong trend because it's way below average and then how likely is the trend to continue we know that it's kind of strong because we still have a red cloud extended, extended way beyond the candles, right? So that's three things. That's three confirmations, three questions. Now we just need to know, right, from the HFX checklist, do we have more sellers in the market, right? And at this moment, we don't. The third question that we ask ourselves is how likely is this trend to continue? How likely is this trend to continue? So question number one is who is in control of the market? Question number two is how strong is this trend? And question number three is how likely is this trend to Okay, so now we just have to ask ourselves the other confirmation questions from the HFX checklist. You're welcome, right? Do we have more buyers or sellers in the market? Or I just use this literally ask myself, like, what is the probability that I'm going to win this trade? So right now, I would say the probability of winning this trade, um, it's kind of not slim, but it's closer to you may get spiked out, you may not get spiked out simply because we see more, we see more uh buyers in the market. So let me just refresh this. Let me just refresh this, right? We still see more buyers in the market, and we also want to make sure that we have enough time as well. What's wrong? Can you see mommy? Uh is she here? Let's see. I highly doubt it. <laughs> oh, she is here. My hi, mommy. Her camera's not on. <laughs> Xavier said, hey, spicy. But uh, all right, so we just gonna wait. We do see that the buyers are really trying to push the market up. See that the buyers are trying to push the market up. 
The sellers are trying to take control, but we still need to wait for our entry point and make sure we have enough time. Look at all this. Look at all this resistance, family. So if you do take this trade, because remember, this is still our training. We're waiting for, let me just go back. Because I low-key forgot. And look at this. Remember, it was forecasted to have a little bit of res uh, resistance against the sell. That's exactly what's happening now. But we are waiting for 365 or higher. Oh, and now the sellers are in control. So all we need now is enough time, right? Because when you're going through the HFS checklist, you want to select your currency pair. You want to make sure you check your confirmations for what you're trying to do. You want to make sure that whatever you're trying to do, the market is actually doing. And you also want to make sure you have enough time in that trade. So we just still have to wait for the push up. I will see if we could find a lower entry. But we all know that patience pays. So it's 365. Right now, if you do find yourself saying, OK, I like that entry point, but I know I can lower this down a little bit. This is when you're going to change your time frame because this is looking at it over five minutes. So in the last five minutes, the highest that price got was 365. Now, if we look at it on a one minute, we're going to be able to see that there's actually a candle that's even lower than that one. So we can have a lower entry point. And I see the chat. One second, guys. I'm going to pull it up. So then we have 335 or higher will be another potential entry point because we still have our red candle. We still have, bitch, we still have our red candle. We still have the candle below all the lines and we still have a red cloud so that line with red and green lets you know who's in control yes exactly because that is the physical representation of buyers and sellers in the market right it's the physical representation of how many buyers or sellers are in the market and no you don't want to wait until 11 a.m because we're doing one minute trades you just want to wait until so now the second entry point, y'all, for people, one second, y'all. The second entry point is 335 or higher. So it's 335 or higher, right? Or 361 if it pushes back up. And as you guys can see, just as the web slinger forecasted, this market is continuing to drop. Do you guys see that? Just drop a yes in the chat if you see that. Right? Or if you're understanding the web slinger, right? You're understanding the web slinger. The web slinger tells us all about the trend. It told us that the market was going to continue to drop, right? And that's exactly what it's doing right now. So, of course, you can continue to adjust your entry with the market. You're just going to move your second line down. Now, when I'm putting my horizontal lines on multiple time frames, I'm just changing the color, right? So, the black line is representing my five minute. My pink line is representing my one minute. So, just so I don't get confused. So, I know that I can always have a higher entry point. But I also know that I can have a lower entry point as well. So look at this, another candle just formed, which means we can lower our entry point as well, right? So we're just going with the market. The market moves, we're moving with it. So we still have a red candle. We still have it under the lines. We still see that it's forecasted to sell and the, and the, the cloud actually gets wider, right? So we get that entry point around 276. Right, so there it is, 276 or higher. Let's make sure we have enough time in the trade. Let's make sure sellers are in control, right? So I clicked the sell button at 279. Um, let me know if you guys got into that trade, right? And let me know what your entry point is because you should be in deep profits right now, right? 279, that's a fantastic entry, diary, right? 280, amazing, amazing, right? So do we understand how understanding the trend, trading on trend, and slowing down can actually help us clear these trades if we understand what we're looking at, right? If we understand that, family, just drop wow in the chat because everybody's going to clear this trade by more than 20 points, right? Everybody's going to clear this trade by more than 20 points. And it's all because we slowed down, right? It's all because we went through the HFX confirmation checklist. And look at this, family. We are in profit by 47 points, 50 points, right? 50 points, right? And we are the buyers and sellers in the market. So if I actually click here and I turn on social trading, I want you guys to see what happens. 
every time somebody gets into this trade, if it's going to happen, we're 50 points in profit. Every time somebody gets into this trade, a bubble is going to pop up on the screen. And we can see that sellers are in control, right? Because there are more red bubbles on the screen. And we're going to clear this trade by 60 freaking points, family. Drop in the chat how much you just made in one minute, right? Drop in the chat how much you made in one minute and how many points did you clear the trade by? I cleared the trade by 80 points. Well, no, maybe not 80 points. 60 points. Clear the trade by 60 points. Right? 377. Josh, I know you on your live account because you are rich. <laughs> right? So how much did we make in one minute, family? And how many points did you clear by 831? Congratulations. Congratulations. That's amazing. 98. Right? 57 point clear. Look at that. That's not bad. 37 is still better than one. Right? 44 points. Wow, wow, wow. So web slinger for the win. Web slinger for the win. Web slinger for the win. So, all right, we're gonna we're gonna uh, move on to the next strategy. But web slinger is literally that simple. If you wanna write down sixty one points, sheesh. If you wanna write it down, web slinger is for trending markets. And if we guys notice, this market has been dropping. Right, these candles are each one minute long. I'm looking at this on a one minute time frame, which means. The market is being scanned every minute. I'm getting new entry points. I mean, I'm getting new candles every minute. It's being refreshed every single minute with a new update on what price did within the last minute. So we're going to keep it going. But this time, instead of using Web Slinger, I'm going to use Pickpocket. So before I move on, just to confirm again, if you're looking for a sell, you want to see a red candle. So ask yourself these questions. Do I see a red candle? Right? Do I see a red candle? The second question you want to ask yourself is, is my red candle under my red lines? <clears throat> Let me write this down so y'all can take a screenshot too for people that's on their phones, I guess. These are cell confirmation. Do I see a red candle, right? Are my candles under my lines and clouds? Did I place a horizontal line at the top and bottom of the candle on M5. And then we're going to drop this drone right there. And then these are the four questions for a cell. I'm going to make it bigger and make it red so y'all can um screenshot it and do what you do. I just need to make this a little bit organized. Right? Because these, if you ask yourself these questions and you get a yes on all these questions, guess what? Going for the trade, that's your entry point, literally, right? There you go, right there. Everything you need to know about Web Slinger for the sale. So once you screenshot it, just drop a yes in the chat. Okay. All right, awesome. Hand me that water. Thank you. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. We got that. So for a buy, we're going to literally just switch it up and ask ourselves the same thing in blue. So I'm going to change that to buy. We're going to say, do I see a blue candle? Do Are my candles under my above my lines and clouds? Are my candles above my lines and clouds? Did I place a horizontal line at the top and bottom of the candle in five? Yep. Same questions. Different color. So once you guys get this one, drop yes in the chat. And we're going to go on to the next strategy because this is it. If you do this, this is it. I, that's it. That's all I did. All right. Awesome. So we're going to go on to the next. Y'all really think I'm getting allergies. This is craziness, right? Because what you're going to notice 
is that the last two steps are never going to change, right? It's always going to be, did I place a, a horizontal line at the top and bottom of my candle? That's all, like, that's literally going to be on every single strategy, the last two questions. But how you look at the chart and how you understand is going to be dependent on how you look at the chart and how you understand. So the next strategy we're going to look at is the OG strategy, simple scalper, right? So you guys can switch to simple scalper or you can just continue to watch my screen. Um, and I'm going to make sure I'm on the right currency pair, which is AC. Again, we're going to do the same exact things, M5. Right. But this time we have different indicators. We don't have the same trend indicators. Right. This time the indicators are telling us about we have one trend indicator. We have some momentum indicators. Um, and then we just have some. What would the Bollinger Bands be considered? I don't know. But we about to we about to figure it out together. So pretty much when you're looking at this strategy, this one, you oh, you're good. This one uses a whole new set of indicators. So the familiar ones that you might notice are going to be the Bollinger Bands. That's these three lines. It consists of this top red line, this bottom blue line, and this skinny black line. So these are the Bollinger Bands. And I like it because it acts as built-in support and resistance. It's built-in support and resistance because I'm going to zoom out. And what you're going to notice is that Anytime the candles get close to this top line, and that's why the line is red, because it's telling you that when price gets here, it's going to sell, right? This is Simple Scalper 1.0. This is the original one. So what this is going to tell you is that, and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more so that you guys can see most of the time, the market is going to stay within these two lines. That's why I like it. It's literally telling you where the market is going to sell at and where the market is going to buy. This strategy is actually really good for the market when it is moving sideways, right? And when the market is moving sideways, it just means that it's hitting a, 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 point, a point, a certain point, and it's going down, right? Or it's hitting a certain point, and it's going back up. So we really don't have to guess because the Bollinger Bands are going to always let us know. And I'm just going to highlight some stuff for y'all right now. So let me change the color. So we'll notice the market was up here, right? Then we see that the market was selling, 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 selling because it's a down slant. The market hit the blue line, right? It literally hit the bottom Bollinger Band and then it started to go up. And then somebody tell me, I'm sorry, let me draw this better. Somebody tell me what happened once the market got to the resistance. What happened once the market got to the resistance, which is this red line? Just drop it in the chat. Once it hit this red line, no, it came back down. It came back down. Yep, it came down because it came up, it hit this red line, and then price started to go down. So it sold. And then what happened when price hit the support? What happened when price hit the blue line, family? Let's look at the candles. What happened? The market went back up, right? And then it hit the resistance, and then it went back down. So the Bollinger Bands act as a really nice indicator that's always going to tell us what the market is about to do, right? So it's going to highlight when the market is going to reverse. That's why I like the Bollinger Bands, right? That's why I like the Bollinger Bands. If you see the candles pushing outside of the bands, you know for sure the market is about to reverse. Now let's look what's happening in real time because this is actually what's happening. Oops, because this is actually what's happening. We have a blue candle, right? Telling us that the buyers are in control, right? We have it forming at the blue Bollinger Band because remember, whenever the candles hit this blue line at the bottom, it's telling you that the market is about to turn around and buy. And what do we see happening? We see that the market was resisting for a really long time. It got really outside of the Bollinger Bands. And now we can be looking for that buy. And is Bollinger Bands, so this is how you spell it. Bollinger Bands. Because I believe it was designed by a guy named John Bollinger. So yeah, that's that's what the Bollinger Bands are telling you. They're always going to point out the reversal. So when you're looking for a... Let's go with sell. Because it's a record. When you're looking for a sell, these are the questions that you're going to ask yourself, right? We're going to go over the confirmations. And then we're actually going to take a trade idea from this strategy. 
but we got to understand what we're looking at because the goal of all of these trainings is for you guys to be able to trade on your own, right? And I'm using candles on my Liberty Scanner right now, right? So the first question with this strategy for a sell, you're going to ask yourself, right? Do I see a red candle? Do I see a red candle? That's always going to let you know the sellers are in control. The second question you're going to ask yourself is, are my candles, right, under my purple dots, right? And these dots are called parabolic SAR, and that may be uh, difficult for people to remember, so I just always go by the colors, right? Because the purple dots, which are right here, is another, similar to the other lines on the web slinger, it's just telling you about the trend. If the candles are below trend, do we think that the market is going to continue to drop or do we think that the market is going to push up? <laughs> That's so funny. So we see that the candles are forming under the trend. Is the market going to go up or down, y'all? No, it's actually going to go down. Remember, if the candles are below right? If the candles are below the trend lines, it's telling us that price is going to continue to go down. If the candles are above the trend lines, it's telling you that price is going to continue to go up, right? So do I see a red candle? Are my candles under my purple dots, right? Because it should be beneath the trend telling us that if price is below trend, it's going to continue to drop. The third question is, do I see right? Do I see a red bar under my red candle, right? These red bars right here are called volume bars. And it's just telling you literally the volume of buyers and sellers in the market. So you can look at it in comparison to other bars, but as long as you see a red bar with the red candle, the red candle is telling you that sellers are in the, really? The red bar is telling you that sellers are in the market. The red candle is telling you that sellers are in the market. The red bar is telling you that the volume of sellers in the market is actually high enough to continue to push the price down. So I got logged out. Let me just come back here. Okay. Oh, and the questions disappear. So is, do I see a red candle? Are my red candles under my dots? Do I see a red bar? Telling us the volume of sellers in the market, right? And then you can ask yourself, these two lines, right? This one is called the stochastic and this one is called the RSI. Uh, but just to not confuse yourself, just ask yourself, are these lines facing down, right? Are they facing down? or below zero? So let me just type the questions out again. Hopefully I don't get uh, kicked out again. Did I copy and paste it? Nope. So for a sell, do I see a red candle? Are my candles under my ducts? Do I see a red bar? Is my stock facing down? Is my stock and RSI facing down? Is my RSI below zero? Why did I type PSI? RSI. So these are the questions that you ask yourself for a sell. And remember, you only need to get yes to at least four of these questions. <clears throat> and then you want to move on to your entry point, which would be, did I place my horizontal line at the top and bottom of the candle on M5? And did I place my horizontal line at the top and the bottom of the candle on M1? So let me copy this. All right, y'all. So y'all can take a screenshot of this. Hold on. Try to make it. And then once y'all have this, just let me know. 
Sorry, I'm trying to put it in a good position, but it's not working out for me. All right, there we go. Once I have that, just drop yes in the chat. Okay. And then, of course, for a buy, it will be the opposite. Um, you're going to ask yourself, I'm going to let me type the buy questions here. We're going to take a screenshot. We're going to do the example. And then we probably won't get through all the strategies today, y'all. We're going to stop at 11.11 and actually do some live trading. But you guys do now have insight into two strategies, the web slinger and simple scalper that you can use. And you're going to know with any strategy once you log in, right, you just want to mainly see red for sales and you want to mainly see blue for buys. And then you never, ever, 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 ever want to skip putting the horizontal line above and below your candles because that's going to always be your entry points. Always, always. The top is going to be where you sell. The bottom is going to be where you buy. So once you understand these concepts, you will be so good. So there we go. Once you guys get that screenshot, or you write it down, drop a one in the chat. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna give people a few more seconds, about 30 seconds on that. Okay. So let's, let's ask ourselves these questions. So do I see a blue candle? Yes. Remember, we need at least three yeses to be able to get into this trade. Oh, we got to place our horizontal lines. Do we see a blue candle? Yes. Hold on. I don't know. So do we see a blue candle? Right? Yes. Are my candles above my dots? No. So we got one yes and one no. Do I see a blue bar? Yes. Is my stochastic and RSI facing up? That's going to be a yes and a yes. So that's four yeses. Is my stochastic and RSI above zero? Yes, right? And that's at the bottom, right? It is above zero. So we have five yeses, one no. Now ask ourselves the last two questions. Did I place the horizontal line at the top and bottom of my candle one and five? Hmm, no, I didn't do that. Let me do that now. So I'm gonna place a horizontal line at the top and bottom of my candle on the five. Did I place a horizontal line at the top and bottom of my candle on M1? Hmm, no, I didn't. Let me do that now. So let me also change the color, right? So the bottom line is always where we sell. The top line is always where we buy. We're trading on a one minute time frame. We had the confirmations for the buy. So it looks like at 224 or lower, we should be able to get in for a buy, right? 224 or lower, we should get in for a buy. Let's check our, what's this thing called? Let's check our market watch. Right, we want to make sure there are more buyers than sellers in the market, and we also want to make sure we have enough time. Right, you don't ever want to get into a trade if it's close. The closer to thirty seconds, the longer you want to wait. I typically will. I like to have about sixty seconds minimum in my trade. Um, so we have the trade idea out there at two twenty four or lower for a buy, and then let's just check out our sell entry as well, just because we marked it up for that reason. And the sell entry is around 250. So we have 250 or higher for a sell and 225 or lower for a buy, right? So let's just see how that works out. And you're going to know which one you should take based on the percentage that you have to win that trade and the amount of time that you have. So in this case, it's 96% sellers in the market. We don't have enough time to get into the trade. We know that once it pushes up to 250, we should be okay for now because right now there are majority sellers in the market, right? So let's wait. We do have enough time. It's 250, 96 sellers. I got in at 251. 
I got in at 251. Let me know if you guys got into the trade and what your entry point is. Two fifty seven. Okay, that's a really good entry point. Two fifty eight. That's not bad. Two fifty seven. All right. Two fifty three. And this thing is dropping. Right. It looks like everybody, for the most part, got a really good entry point. If you guys are in profit and we're getting a nice drop on this thing, which is amazing. If you guys are in profit, right? Just drop in profit in the chat if you guys are in profit drop an in profit in the chat if you are more than 10 points in profit right drop a blue face in the chat if you are more than 10 points drop a blue face in the chat awesome if you are more than 20 points in profit drop a money bag in the chat Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. This is amazing. Everybody should be clearing at least 20 points in profit. That was a very nice clear, right? That was a very nice clear. Very nice clear. So, so far, fam, we are 2-0. and oh, Not bad. Not bad for a Friday. Right? Clear $26. Congratulations. Yep, very good Friday, very good Friday, 2-0, and oh. love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. But is this making sense for the people who have been on all week, right, for the people that have been on on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday session, does the HFS checklist make sense, right? We got to slow down. We got to ask ourselves these questions because if we know the money is there, there's no point to rush and get into the trades, right? There's no point. So, all right, family, it is around 11.15. I know, right? I can't wait till I become a Golob educator too. So we're just going to, I'm not going to, I mean, I could open this up to IG. I just, I don't know where my phone stand is at, to be honest. But I'm gonna keep us on Zoom. I'm not gonna get on Instagram. There are about, 10 spots left. I don't know if I should go on Instagram, but we're going to get started in about, oh, this is your first time here, Destiny. I feel like I talked to you before. Maybe I did on Instagram. I don't know. So, all right, y'all, we're going to get started in about three minutes or so. You good? Can you have your popsicle? It's early in the morning. It was not an hour. All right. Yeah, Instagram does be tripping sometimes, but we are going to get into the live trading session, family. We're going to start at 1120, right? So I'm going to do less explaining and more trading. So everything we just learned today, we're actually going to apply it in the market, right? We're actually going to apply it in the market. So I'm going to get some water, right? I'm going to play some music. We're going to get started very shortly, very shortly. But you guys are already ahead. You're already closer to your daily goal. We're 2-0, and and we're going to keep it going.